We're in section 11.2, approximating square roots. Approximating square roots. In example one, it says approximate to the nearest whole number. All right, now, the other day, yesterday, we learned the definition of a perfect square. That's very important in this lesson. What is a perfect square? You can give me an example or the definition. What's a perfect square? Anybody think of a number that would be a perfect square? Four. Four is a perfect square because two times two equals four. It has a factor that can be multiplied by itself to equal that number. So four is a perfect square. What's another perfect square? Eight. No. There's no number that can be multiplied by itself to be eight. 121 because 11 times 11 is 121. 16 because 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so here's what, here's what you have to know. You've got to know your perfect squares. So let's look at the square root of 11. That's not a perfect square because there's no number that can be multiplied by itself to give me 11. But is there a perfect square that is close to 11? What is a perfect square that would be close to 11? Whoa. Perfect square. 12 is not a perfect square. 10 is not a perfect square. Is 9 a perfect square? Yes, because 3 times 3 is 9. Now, guys, this is something that you can memorize. Perfect squares, okay, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, all of those numbers have factors that are multiplied by themselves to give us that number, okay? So I've got nine on the low end. What perfect square is just above 11? What perfect square is just higher than 11? 16. 16, okay? So now I need to decide which one is it closest to? Is it closest to nine or is it closest to 16? Nine. It's closest to 16. So what is, or I'm sorry, to 9. So what is, ugh, what is the square root of 9? Three. 3. So that's my answer. So here's what we're doing here. We're choosing the perfect square that it's closest to and taking the square root of that number. You should be looking up here. Okay. Make sense? Think you can do one? All right, so now, instead of the square root of 11, I want you to approximate the square root of 26 to the nearest whole number. All right, so what perfect square is 26 closest to? 25, 25 okay? So I'm going to say, and this is how I want you to write it on your homework, okay? I'm going to say square root of 26 is approximately 5, okay? So now, I want you kind of shifting over to mental math. You know it's closest to 25. So you know if the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 26 is going to be pretty close <coughs> to 5. Okay? If you put it in your calculator, it's going to be a really long decimal, but it's going to be just about 5. All right, I want you to approximate these numbers. The square root of 51, the square root of 67, and the square root of 145. Approximate these to the nearest whole. Now, if it's approximated, remember we use our, our squiggly signs. That's our approximation symbol. All right, so square root of 51 is approximately what? Seven, why? Because 51 is pretty close to 49, right? And 49 is a perfect square. So I'm going to say it's approximately 7. What about 67? Eight. It's, a, it's approximately 8. 67 is real close to 64. What about square root of 145? Twelve. It's going to be about 12. Okay, so I'm just finding the closest perfect square and then taking the square root of that. That's example 1. What was number 1? 7. Okay, so now in example 2, I'm going to approximate to the nearest tenth. Now, this is as simple as just putting it in your calculator. So go ahead and put the square root of 11 in your calculator and press equal. You'll see that it shows the square root of 11 again. You need to press the S to D button to change it to a decimal, and you're going to round to the nearest tenth. So the square root of 11 
is approximately what? 3.3. Because it's 3.31, the 1 keeps the 3 the same. So to the nearest tenth, I'm going to say 3.3. Make sense? All right, now I want you to do these. Square root of 23. Square root of 76. And the square root of 108. I want you to approximate each one of these to the nearest tenth. All right, so square root of 23 is approximately what? 4.8, because it's 7, 9, so the 9 rounds it up to an 8, 4 and 8 tenths. What about the square root of 76? All right, very good, 8 and 7 tenths. Whoops. 8 and 7 tenths, and what about the square root of 108? 10 and 4 tenths, very good, because the 9 rounds the 3 up, 10 and 4 tenths. All right, um, who got them all right? Get them all right? Raise your hand. Did you get them all right? Okay, very good. So that's it for example two. Now, in example three, it says, use the approximation of a square root of 11 to estimate the maximum walking speed of a giraffe. All right, this goes over uh, back to, I know, random example. Um. The giraffe example on the top of page 540, it says that Dr. McNeil Alexander studies the motion of animals. From his study, he determined that the maximum speed S in feet per second that an animal can walk is S equals 5.66 times the square root of L, where L is the animal's leg length. What is the maximum walking speed? For a giraffe that has a leg length of 11 feet. So this is very similar to what we did yesterday. We're just substituting in the value for the variable and then we're solving. So if my formula is S equals 5 and 66 hundredths times the square root of L, where am I going to plug in my value for the square root of 11? And for S or L? L. L. Okay. Now we found that when we took the square root of 11 and rounded to the nearest tenth, what do we get? We got 3.3, 3. 3, right? So 5 and 66 hundredths times 3 and 3 tenths gives me the approximate walking speed. About 18. What? Go. All right, it's about 18.67, so 18.7. So if I were going to round, I would say about 19, um, what is it, feet per second or something really unrealistic like that. Uh, yeah, feet per second. Of course it is. Because is that really possible? No. All right, now the question is going to be very specific. It'll say, round to the nearest whole number or round to the nearest tenth and then you just make sure you round appropriately okay um so example three is basically just practicing plugging in or substituting the value for the variable the first term you need to know is an irrational number if a number is irrational it neither terminates nor repeats all right well what does terminate mean what does terminate mean? To cut off, right? To cut off. So a terminating decimal ends 3.2, 4.67. Those decimals end. They terminate. All right, so they would be rational numbers. Now, a repeating decimal, somebody give me an example of a repeating decimal. Anything. 3.3333333, and it goes on forever. So 3 would be repeating. Okay, so those numbers are rational. It is only irrational if it goes on forever and it has no pattern. Okay, if it goes on forever and it has no pattern. Real numbers are all rational and irrational numbers. So every number in the whole number system, in the existence of the world, those are called real numbers. All right, example four. So now 
we're going to try to figure out if these numbers are rational or irrational and then say why, okay? So the square root of 2. Go ahead and in your calculators take the square root of 2 and change it to a decimal. Do you see any pattern to that decimal? Is there any pattern there? No, there's no pattern. 4, 1, 2, 4, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6, 2. There's no pattern, and it does not terminate. You say, well, it ends on my calculator. Well, that's because your calculator can't go on any farther than that. Okay? You would know if it was a terminating decimal. Okay? So, I'm going to say that this number is irrational. And I'm going to say non terminating or repeating. That's about as abbreviated as it comes. Okay? Non terminating or repeating. That means that this number is irrational. Now, negative one ninth. Okay? Well, one divided by nine is what? When you do it in your calculator, what do you get as a decimal? 0 0.1 repeating. So if it's a repeating decimal, is it rational or irrational? Rational, yes. <laughs> okay, rational numbers can be repeating decimals. So I'm going to say rational. And why? Because it repeats. <coughs> All right, negative square root of 169. What's the square root of 169? Very good, negative 13. So 13 is a whole number. So would that be rational or irrational? Hello, wake up, guys. It's rational, of course. It's a whole number. So I'm going to say rational because it's a whole number, what we call in an integer because it's an integer. All right, y'all need to wake up. All right, 1.211, 21112. Rational or irrational? It is irrational. There is no pattern. So it's the same reason that I gave in the first uh, example. It's non-terminating and non-repeating. Here's the deal. If it's irrational, that's going to be my reason every time because it doesn't terminate and it doesn't repeat. That's going to be my reason every time if it's irrational. If it's rational, I would say because it's a whole number or because it's a repeating decimal or because it's a terminating decimal. Do you see that? Okay, so then you just say what that number is. All right, and that's how you tell the difference between a rational and an irrational number.